let us take grades of organization and body plan into the consideration and on basis of that we will come to the next uh, uh, general characteristics and we will understand that what are the major broad classifications above phylums rather I would say well, how do we understand an organism's body that is an animal's body first of all the animalia would have the simplest example that is amoeba which is put into the protestants or you can say any sponges let's take for example there would be organisms which would be unicellular but because they have been put into protestants so we are not considering it the unicellular level that is grades of organization one would be unicellular level where the entire cell would be working as an organism that means a single cell is performing all the functions that organism is supposed to do that is unicellular we have talked in great lengths about it in the uh, uh, kingdom protista what we are going to concentrate over here is what happens to be animalia is the multicellular organisms when we talk about multicellular organisms we are talking about a classification that is termed as metazoa Okay. Now, when we have a bunch of cells, you know that we have studied or we have understood that there is a level known as tissue level. If the cells are not arranged in a tissue, that means the cell aggregate plan is present. That means we have talked about thallus earlier, thalloid organization where there was only tissue and organ system was not present. Over here, when we have the cell aggregate plan, that particular class of organisms would be under a greater division known as parazoa. And over here, we have sponges which have cell aggregate plan the body is not differentiated into tissues for working together and then we have the higher classification that is u metazoa u means true true metazoa which will have a higher level of organization the grade of organization would be higher and it would be tissue level okay so tissues would be formed, they could be or, or arranged, these tissues could be arranged or organized into organs or they could be arranged into a higher level that is known as organ system. So on basis of that, whether the tissues have been arranged in organ level or they have been arranged in organ system level, we further have classification. One is radiata and other is bilateria. Now over here you have to pay attention that the grade of organization is somehow pointing towards another classification system that is uh, another classification feature that I would say is symmetry. Okay. Now, what is radiata, what is bilateria, what is symmetry basically? We are discussing this one and this one and we have come to this one as well over here in this classification itself. Please pay attention that one by one we have to understand each, each general feature and in terms of those general features we have to see that how the uh, phylums are being classified, how the kingdom has been divided. Now, when we were talking about grades of organization, we saw that there would be one unicellular level and other would be multicellular level. Inside the multicellular level there would be a cellular stage where there would be cell aggregate plan and that cell aggregate plan will have sponges. In the terms of eumetazoa we had tissue level. Tissue level could be further in the organ grade or the organ system grade where many organs work together. If I talk about myself or yourself you will see that you have an organ system grade where you have for sensory system in order to see something you have an organ which is involved that is eye. Apart from that there is an organ known as brain which is involved. Apart from that there are glands present in the eye which are responsible for making your vision very much clear so we have an organ system grade otherwise the lower organisms they have an organ the many organs are not arranged into an organ system in order to conduct a function so on that basis we have eumetazoa but apart from that we are coming across two terms that is radiata and bilateria if you are uh, paying attention to the terms we have two more terms that we have to derive from over here that is radiata is having radial symmetry and bilateria is having bilateral symmetry. Now over here we are introduced to the term symmetry that is why I told you that we are referring to this general feature as well. Now what is radial symmetry? What is bilateral symmetry? 
on the basis of symmetry also we are able to classify the organisms into different uh, phylums and uh, the symmetry happens to be supposedly you are having a spherical ball in your hand how many uh, uh, mirror images could be formed out of that it, uh, the answer would be that they would be infinite now why i am saying that the plant body or the animal body we don't take plant body in case of plants we take the flowers in case of animals we take the entire animal body how many mirror images could be formed by passing a central axis if supposedly you have an organism like this or you have a round organism you pass a central axis you cut the organism's body into two parts from the central axis how many mirror images are being formed in case you have only one mirror image which is being formed there is only one axis which could form the mirror images i hope i'm clear if not i'm repeating it again supposedly you have an organism like this that is a spherical organism imagine it in three dimension and other organism happens to be like this okay now how many axes are present which can divide this organism into two parts in such a way that each part happens to be mirror image how many axes could pass through the central part of the body so that the parts of the organism which are formed they are mirror images in case there are more than one that means almost as many axes you can pass from the central axis and as many cuts you are making every time if you are having a mirror image that would be the radial symmetry that means the organism would be somewhat spherical in shape take the example of a ball spherical ball supposedly you cut it from one axis central axis every time every time you change the central axis degree you are going to find the mirror images because it is a sphere in case of any other organism any other shape if it is not spherical what happens is that there is only one single axis central axis if you cut the organism from that you are going to find the mirror images and that symmetry is known as bilateral symmetry all right one is radial symmetry other is bilateral symmetry radial symmetry gives you n number of axes where you can get the mirror images and bilateral symmetry gives you only one axis where you get the mirror images so this is about the radial and bilateral symmetry and talking about parazoans they would be undoubtedly asymmetrical how can you expect any symmetry in things which are not arranged so we have three types of organisms over here asymmetrical Sym radially symmetrical and bilaterally symmetrical okay we were talking about grades of organization we had come to the organ grade we had come to the organ system grade that is the highest system okay next what we are going to study is we have come across these grades of organization we have reached the organ system so we are done with the grades of organization we are done with the three types of symmetries first one that was in the case of parazoa that was totally asymmetrical next is that we have radial and bilateral symmetry now we are going to talk about germ layers body cavity body plan has also been discussed because we have discussed that whether the organism is radial or it is having a different shape and whether it is having the cell aggregate plan or it is having a tissue level so next we are going to study about these two we have studied about these three individually next we have to understand once this these parts are clear what about these two and nutrition i guess you know very well but uh, before that we have to do these